which, whom, that, relative pronouns, that's what we're going to talk about today. Hi there! Thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. If this is the first video that you're watching from my channel, I make educational and motivational content. So if you don't want to miss any of my new uploads, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell icon. Like I said in the intro, Kanina, it's all about relative pronouns. So lessons na ito. I already talked about pronouns and I already talked about the difference din ng who tsaka whom in an older lesson. So if you're just into that, I will just link it right here so you can catch up. Ngayon, it's all about the other relative pronouns at kung kailan sila tama gamitin and which is better na gamitin sa different na situations. And before we jump into that, just a quick little plug. If you're interested to get the reviewers that I made, join the online or live review events to get to know more about me. Request questions then at mga topics na gusto nyong i-discuss ko in my future videos. You can message me directly at www.facebook.com slash team Laika. And now that I have that out of the way, let's go back into the lesson. I'll see you in a bit. Alright, ito yung lecture natin on relative pronouns. We're going to talk about who, whom, who's, which, what, and that. Now, really quickly, yung pinaka, ano ba to, overly generalized na ibig sabihin itong mga to, or na paggamit sa mga ito is this. You use the word who if you're talking about people, pero siya ang subject ng sentence. Whom kung people, pero object siya ng sentence. Who's kung ito ay pagmamayari? So, when we talk about possessive, sino ang may-ari kanino? Uh, kanino ba tong gamit na ito? We use whose. Yung what, we use for things. Yung which, ginagamit natin also actually for things. Pero may distinction siya sa what, which we'll talk about later. And then, yung which also, ginagamit natin sa parenthetical clause. Ibig sabihin ng parenthetical, ibig sabihin pwede mo siyang tanggalin. Yung that kung ito ay restrictive clause. Ibig sabihin, importante siya sa sentence. Now, break down natin ito, but before I do that, I just need to mention this. I already made two videos na related sa topic na ito. Yung who or whom natin, I talked about the distinction. Kung kailan nyo gagamitin yung who or whom, meron din tong quick quiz. Ililink ko na lang dito sa i button sa taas. And ganun din yung whose and whose natin. So, who is and whose na pag-usapan na natin before. Okay? Laling ko na lang din dito. So, ibig sabihin, itong apat na, na cases na ito, okay, dadaanan na lang natin ngayon. Actually, tatlo kasi yung who, whom, and whose, yun yung napagkakaguluhan. Yung first natin pag-uusapan is yung who at saka yung whom. Now, again, sa sinabi ko kanina, ito yung ginagamit sa isang person kung siya ay subject, yung who. Yung whom ginagamit natin kung person pa rin, pero object na siya ng sentence. Now, ano ba talaga ang ibig sabihin nun? Ang pinakamadaling uh, ibig sabihin nun is who ang tigagawa, okay? whom ang tigatangga. Ibig sabihin nun sa sentence na ganito, blank wrote that song, ang tinatanong mo ay kung sino ang nagsulat. So, yung pagsusulat ng kanta, yun ang action dito sa sentence na ito. At ang tinatanong mo ay kung sino ang gumawa nung action na yun, which is yung pagsusulat. So, dahil yung tao na hinahanap mo ay siyang tigagawa, he use the word who. Okay? So, who wrote that song? Na kung kunyari ang sentence naman ay ganito, sabi, for blank was that song written, dahil yung pagsusulat ng kanta ay hindi na yung uh, tinatanong mo ang gumawa. Kasi nga, siya tigatanggap lang nung kanta, di ba? Kasi iba ang nagsulat, sinulat lang yun para sa kanya. Kung hindi siya ang gumawa nung pagsusulat ng kanta, tigatanggap lang siya, use the word whom. So, for whom was that song written? Now, in Filipino, ang madaling way to distinguish this is, you use who kung ang question mo ay sino, and then you use whom kung ang tanong mo ay kanino. Now, bakit? Kasi, sino ang nagsulat ng kanta? Yun ang translation nitong sentence na ito. And ito naman is, para kanino sinulat ang kantang yan? So again, the word is kanino, para kanino. Okay, so sino kung who, pag whom, kanino. Fairly easy, and again, I have a full lesson on this. Ililink ko na lang sa taas. Hanapin nyo yun kung hindi nyo pa yun napapanood para madrill kayo dito. Kasi marami nagkakamali talaga dito sa tanong na ito. The next question is, ano namang pinagkaiba ng whom sa whose? Kasi yung whom tsaka whose, pareho kasi sila na kapag tinagalog mo, pareho silang kanino. Okay? Kaya lang, anong klaseng kanino yung whose? 
ang who's ginagamit natin kung possessive. Ibig sabihin, pagmamayari. Hindi necessarily pagtanggap ng isang bagay. Ito ay kung pagmamayari ang isang bagay ng isang tao or uh, ng isang entity. Okay? So, something like this. Blank song is that. So, tinatanong mo, kaninong kanta yan? Okay? So, yung kaninong kanta yan, we're talking about ownership. Kung sino ang nagpo-possess ng kantang yan, sino magmamayari ng kantang yan. So, the word here would be whose. Kanino pa rin, pero all about possessive or ownership. So, whose song is that? Again, yun ang difference ng who, whom, at whose. Now, again, if you want more quizzes naman regarding whose, you can find my lesson on whose and whose. Yung ating homophone horrors na yon nakalink din sa taas. Now, we're going to talk about the other pairs ng mga words. Pinag-iiba ko sila. Again, yung distinction na pinag-uusapan natin. I'm actually considering making full lessons for each pair. Pero dahil inahabol ko to para dun sa mga malapit na ang exam, pinagsama-sama ko muna sa video na ito. So, I can go over them para meron na kayong first-hand knowledge. Okay? First pair natin is yung what and which. Now, if you think about it, maraming cases na interchangeable sila. Ibig sabihin, pwede mong gamitin yung what, pwede yung which, pareho naman silang tama. Pero may maliit na pagkakaiba yan na marami ang hindi nakapapansin, which is this. Yung what, ginagamit mo siya for things. Okay? Kahit ano yan, what is that? Diba? What book are you reading? All of these na mga bagay, we use the word what. Yung which, ginagamit din natin sa things. Pero ginagamit din natin siya sa animals, ginagamit din natin siya specifically kung merong options. Okay? So, anong ibig sabihin itong options na ito? Kung ang isang bagay ay tinatanong mo at wala kang pinagpipilian, you can use what? You can use which. Pareho naman silang tama. Pero, kung meron ang pinagpipilian, hindi mo na pwedeng gamitin yung what? You will have to use which. What do I mean by that? Something like this. Sabi, blank hobbies do you like? So, yung hobbies na yan, wala akong binigay na pagpipilian. At sa dami ng hobbies sa world, Okay, marami ka talagang options. So, overbroad yung topic mo. So, pwede mong gamitin yung what. What hobbies do you like? Okay, so again, marami kasi pinagpipilian na hobbies. Okay, general siya. At uh, wala kang binigay na listahan na multiple choice kumbaga. Kung saan siya talaga mamimili. Now, actually, you can also use the word which. So, which hobbies do you like? Pwede rin naman siya. Ang difference na would be if the question is like this. Sabi niya, between writing and painting, blank hobby does she prefer? So now you have options. Yung writing and painting, these are your options. At dahil may options ka na, hindi mo na pwedeng gamitin yung what. You can only use which. Kasi kung what hobby does she prefer, pero may pinagpipilian, mali na yun. Okay? So again, but the things sa what and which, pareha mo silang pwedeng gamitin sa bagay, Pero, kung meron ng specific options or kaunti lang talaga ang options, so true or false, diba? which is which, kung meron ka pagpipilian, which na siya, hindi na siya what. Now, why do we have to talk about that and which? Ang reason talaga is because some people think it's interchangeable. Ibig sabihin, pwede mo silang pagbalik rin ng walang complications at walang implications sa sentence. Pero actually, hindi yun totoo. Kasi ang that, you have to use it if yung kasunod nito ay isang restrictive clause. Ibig sabihin, ang restrictive clause, kapag uh, itong phrase na ito, or yung clause na ito, ay binura ko, mag-iiba ang ibig sabihin ng buong sentence. Ibig sabihin, importante siya sa sentence na yon. Okay? We'll talk about that sa sample later. Yung which, ginagamit natin sa isang parenthetical clause. Pag sinabi natin yung parenthetical clause, ibig sabihin, kahit natanggalin mo yung part na yon ng sentence na nagsisimula sa which, ay hindi magbabago yung meaning or intention mo dun sa sentence na yon. So, a sentence like this, the notebook, blank was adapted from a book, is a movie, blank always makes her cry. Ano ang gagamitin natin sa that at which? If you notice, yung first na blank ay nasa loob ng dalawang comma. So, ang sabi natin, dun sa lesson natin ng subject verb agreement, we call it yung tanggalable phrase or yung ating interjections. Ibig sabihin yan, itong part na to ay pwede mong tanggalin na walang implication dun sa sentence na yon. Kasi, whether it's adapted from a book or not, ang sinasabi mo lang sa sentence is that itong the notebook ay movie na nakakapagpaiyak sa kanya. So, kahit na 
matanggal itong parang bonus trivia na ito ay hindi magbabago yung ibig sabihin ng sentence. So, dahil hindi siya ganun kahalaga, siya ay isang parenthetical clause, you use the word which. Okay? So, again, bakit? Kasi hindi ito kailangan sa sentence. In fact, I can cross this out. Okay? And the sentence will still stand. Pareho lang ang ibig sabihin niya. Now, yung that, ginagamit mo sa restrictive clause. Bakit? Kasi itong part na to, that always makes her cry, pag tinanggal ko siya sa sentence, mag-iba na totally yung gusto niyang sabihin. Okay? So, you use that. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. Pag tinanggal ko itong that always makes her cry, at binasa ko siya uli, ang ibig sabihin na lang sa sentence mo is, the notebook, which was adapted from a book, is a movie. So, sinasabi mo na lang talaga na isa siyang pelikula. Pero hindi yun ang gusto mong sabihin. Hindi yun ang full intent mo sa sentence na yun. Ang gusto mong sabihin is that yun ang na nagpapaiyak sa kanya. So, yung crying part, yun ang mas mahalaga. So, ibig sabihin nun, hindi mo pwedeng tanggalin yung part na yan ng iyong sentence. And because of that, you cannot use which, you have to use that. Okay? So, again, you use which kapag tanggalable yung isang phrase, you use that kung hindi mo siya pwedeng tanggalin. Okay? So, which, kapag pwede tanggalin, that, pag mahalaga siya. Now that you know that, you can try this. Sabi, blank pets are these, blank dog is yours. Ano ang tamang sagot dito? So, yung first sentence, sabi niya, blank pets are these. Sa Tagalog, kaninong mga alaga ang mga ito. So, you can imagine, pumasok siya sa isang kwarto, nakita niya ang daming mga animals na tumatakbo. So, kung kanino ang pinag-uusapan, this has to be... Whose? So, whose pets are these? And then, your next question niya is, blank dog is yours? So, ibig sabihin, alin sa mga aso na nandito ang sa iyo? So, again, we are talking about options. Meron ng mga options. So, I can't just say uh, that. I can't just say any other relative pronoun. I will use the word which. Kasi alin sa mga asong ito ang sa iyo? So, the answer is letter B. Now, the best way for you to gauge if you got this is for you to answer the quick quiz. So, you have options. Nandun din siya sa taas. And then, I will give you a few minutes to answer this. If you're ready with your pen and paper, your timer starts now.
All right, let's see how you did. So let's start with the first sentence. Sabi, here's blank happened last week. So ito daw ang nangyari last week. So it's a specific thing, okay, na nangyari in the past. So you can say, here's what happened last week. So ito yung nangyari noon. Now next, sabi, I asked John Blank, where are you with today? Okay, so sino ang kasama mo ngayon? We're talking about someone, okay? At hindi siya kanino, it's actually the person na tinatanong natin. So, this will be who. Who were you with today? Now, he said blank he was alone. So, I can't just say na which he was alone because it will change the entire meaning. So, I could say he said that he was alone. Now, if you were alone, blank slippers are these. Now, slippers ay chinelas. At tinatanong mo, hindi kung ano yung chinelas, hindi kung alin ang chinelas, pero kung kanino yung mga chinelas na yon. So, that would be whose. Whose slippers are these? Next, the slippers, blank were pink and sparkly, were definitely not his. So, yung mga chinelas daw na pink at uh, sparkly, syempre hindi yun dun sa kay John kasi lalaki si John. Okay? Assuming na, na sa isang relationship sila, no? So, ibig sabihin no, itong part na to, yung slippers na yan, whether they were pink and sparkly, ang importante lang sa sentence is that hindi yan sa kanya. So, itong part na to is not necessarily important. Bakit? Kasi kahit na kung anong kulay man siya, yung fact na sinasabi niya na yung slippers ay hindi kanya, ay hindi magbabago. So, ibig sabihin, the answer here would be which. The slippers, which were pink and sparkly, were definitely not his. Okay? So, I hope you got all of those correctly. If you didn't, that's okay. Uh, I'll be posting more questions on my Instagram account. So, if you don't follow me yet, follow me at Laika Maravilla for more questions like this so you can practice. There's a quick quiz function on the Instagram story na uh, pwede nyo i-click at pwede nyo sagutan. And it's a great way for me to know kung natututo talaga kayo. And I hope when I post a question with this, I kayo ay magiging tama doon. Alright, I hope you learned something today. If you did, click thumbs up. Make sure that you share this video with your friends and ako mag-exam din sila para mas marami tayong matulungan. And as always, if you want to reach out to me directly, get the reviewers, join the online review events, you can go to www.facebook.com slash teamlaika for more information. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe na and hit that bell icon para hindi mo miss yung mga paparating pa lang ng mga lessons. There are more coming up. And as always, sa sinasabi natin sa team na ito, never stop learning. Adja-adja, kaya niyan. I'll see you in the next video and bye for now.